I try to be very transparent about my journey. Um, I, I've shared a bunch of YouTube videos and things I think that can help women and mothers um, specifically. And you know, my, what I'm really passionate about is the intersection of where motherhood, music, and wellness all come together. So I think that this dialogue needs to talk about boundaries and healthy boundaries and the self-care aspect because if you guys are drowning and it's all about your kids and it's all about your industry and there's no time for self, it, it won't last, right? I mean, that's, that's the reality. I think um, for my family, especially my daughters, they set the boundaries for me, which means <laughs> we were at a, the state fair this past October in North Carolina and this 17-year-old uh, came up to me and said, Ninth Wonder, and just called me out. So I, I got my daughter and my other daughter on one arm, there's cotton candy everywhere, and we're trying to do that. And the girl comes up to me, wants to take a picture. And my 18-year-old was like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. We're at the fair. This is fair time. <laughs> this is family, uh-uh. Like, she was dead serious. My wife actually stepped up one day and she was like, your laptop is your biggest enemy. Because it was the barrier between me, her, me and my kids, me and life in general. I have, as I was saying in the intro, is that I've become much more uh, public about my private life. And I'll say to my clients, the way I would want them to say to me, is like, hey, look, I'm available. But just so you know, I try to spend like these two hours a day with my son. So if we can avoid that time and we can talk, say, like at 10 at night, which is only seven year time, um, you know, that would be good. And, um, <laughs> and, and it's funny by saying that I actually, um, I have a stronger bond with them, right? Then they feel more comfortable saying to me things like, well, Monica, when you're negotiating an agreement for me, just try to work around my daughter's birthday. I think for me, it's just the conditioning. I'm learning to now learn that like, you don't have to say yes, that you can say no, and that people will accept what you tell them to accept, and you give them no choice. All of my friends, we all got married around the same time. We all had kids around the same time. So now it becomes, we created another village in, with that. Mm -hmm. who, who is, you know, y'all go out this weekend? Y'all did? Y'all didn't? Okay, so we gonna, what we gonna do? And then we, we trade out, let's, that's how we do it. But you can't do it by yourself. I think social media has made it that we can do things by ourselves and we can't. I just wanted to highlight, we have four different families up here, right? And all of them have certain rules. All of them have certain contracts in place, right? And all of them have a support system. And so if we can start to conceptualize family as a system, just like, almost like we do work. We don't go anywhere where we're not scheduled and rule driven and with some, and nobody's gonna go and start a business all by themselves and not ask anyone to help them, right? But if we can start to bring these things into our family system, it just makes it more efficient. You know, it's, it's an organized system just like anything else. And I told them they had to move the interview to the next day because I wasn't missing that game. Because I know the one thing that's important to her is bat. She loves basketball, that's the thing. So that's one of the things that I had to do. I had to planes, trains, and automobiles just to make sure I didn't miss that moment. Well, I think mindfulness is the key term, right? So I think that, you know, and I don't know for sure because I'm not the, the one doing it, but mindfulness and balance today seems realistic you can't project for the next 30 days. So there's gotta be some reality testing here too. If you can't do that, and you can only do the next week, then do the next week. The only way to try for me to strike some kind of balance in life is man, when I am there, I am there and I am doing that. And that's it, I'm not doing anything else because I need to give you that time. So often when you're doing deals and you're caught up in the swirl of the music business, um, you know, you end up losing sight of why you're doing it and what's it for? Like, what's this money that we're making? What's it for? What's the point of it? You know, and um, you know, you do also get to a point where like you're making really good money. So what do you want your life to look like, right? What's important to you? And it goes back to what you were saying about prioritization. But really what it comes down to is like, what are your values? What's yeah. the most important thing that you're doing right now? Right, what's, what's and, and it might be that day, 
right? Sometimes the most important thing I can do in a particular day is go home and put my son to sleep, right? And that is my self-care, and that is something I'm doing for him, and I'm doing it for me, and I'm doing it for my husband. And that becomes like, there's this moment of peace for me. For some of us, the first time being in the music industry and coming into this type of wealth, we're trying to repair generational wealth. We're trying to be the best dad because we're all looked at as deadbeats. We're trying to do all of this at one time. Like, and it's all a race for legacy. It's all of trying to erase a past that you're trying to fix and do beats at the same time. Being a woman in the industry where we are conditioned, especially in the entertainment industry, to believe that like now you're this scarred, discarded woman once you have a baby. This narrative is only now changing. Like before it was like, you had a baby and you were an artist, career suicide, next. Mm -hmm. Who's the younger, non-pregnant, non-mother working? Because once a woman becomes a mother, it's immediately, she's just not focused on her career anymore. She just can't be, it's impossible. No, it's very possible, but we have to work against this narrative. My, my favorite moments in the studio have always been the ones where my kids were there. Like, I mean, they're just cool. They're great memories. And, you know, it, it's rubbed off on, on, on them some. And, you know, when, you, when you're seven-year-old, it doesn't still quite grasp all that you do is starting to go, hey, next time you go to the studio, can you record the music for Pirates of the Caribbean? And I'm like, um... <laughs> No, that's not exactly how this works, but we'll, we'll get there. Working with people is not only an opportunity thing, it's an energy thing. So, you know, I've been lucky enough. You can tell when you meet people if they got kids or not. <laughs> like, you can tell it, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, and I've been in the game long enough to everybody I know, all the rappers I know and R&B singers I know, we all got children anyway. We've, we watch each other's kids grow up, you know what I mean? So. Most of the time, the studios I've been in are kid-free, I mean, are kid-safe environments. Um, my studio is that way, you know, because of my kids grew up in the studio. So a lot of times I've gotten the artists say, man, I got my son with me. How old is he? Five. Oh, we got, <laughs> yep. we got Candyland. We got, <laughs> I got a video game. We, we, we are, we are kid-ready in here. So thanks for having this, because yeah. these are the types of things I think people need to hear and talk about and share. What's up, y'all? This is B.O.B. This is G-Eazy. I'm Mo. This is Julia Michaels. This is Logic. Make sure you subscribe to the Recording Academy channel. Flex.